In the 17th-18th centuries, Ukraine existed as an independent state formation within the Russian Empire. It was headed by a hetman, so the title of the Cossack state, the Parisian host or the Cossack hetmanate, derived from the word hetman. The administration of the state was built on democratic principles and self-government. Cossack officers were entrusted with supervisory responsibilities. It was a ruling elite which had administrative power, controlled the shipbuilding sector and the armed forces, commanded finances and represented the Cossack hetmanate in relations with foreign states. The Cossack officers were elected at the Cossack Council with the participation of all Cossacks. The majority of Cossack officers came from Orthodox noble families. On April 23, 1775, Russian Empress Catherine the Great issued a decree on the destruction of the Zaporizhian host and later, in 1783, a decree on the liquidation of the Cossack hetmanate, Cossack regiments and territorial units form and social-political formation, typical for the entire territory of Tsarist Russia, were established in Ukraine. After the law, which granted the rights for having a noble status, was introduced in 1785, the former Cossack officers became a part of the nobility. Already in 1780, 25,000 Ukrainians gained the right to be Russian noblemen. The majority of them were appointed to high positions in Russian institutions, were given Russian high ranks and made a good career for themselves. Why did Cossack officers decide to join the service of the Russian Empire? Evidently, it realized that a former Cossack state would never be restored as it was during the reign of Bogdan Khmelnytsky, Ivan Vyhorsky or Petro Doroshenko. What could Cossacks do after the destruction of the Zaporizhian host? Where could they use their talent and skills? As unnatural as it may sound, the Russian Empire truly gave such opportunities. Hundreds and thousands of Ukrainians made a good career working in the public or military service of the Russian Empire. It is worth noting that, in particular, Ukrainian clergy who took powerful positions in the imperial church moved to Russia. There were so many of them that the Catherine the Great stopped hiring them. But during the reign of Catherine the Great, St. Petersburg started to engage the sons of Cossack officers and graduates of academies who choose secular professions. From 1754 to 1768, about 300 graduates of the academy decided to be employed by the Russian Empire and moved to Russia. Having graduated from the academy, they were able to continue their education abroad. After that, they returned to the native land and enrolled in the service of the Russian Empire. The number of Ukrainian doctors exceeded the number of Russian ones twofold. In the last two decades of the 18th century, Cossack descendants of the Hetmanate accounted for one-third of the students of the teacher seminary in St. Petersburg. It was a time of quick integration of Ukraine into a so-called common imperial space. In particular, it happened during the reign of Catherine the Great because it was a time of colonization of the south of Russia, former Tatar territory. Earlier it was under the protectorate of Turkey. So Catherine the Great knew perfectly well that she had to involve as many of the nobles from Little Russia as possible. After all, where else could she find such people? She didn't want to engage newcomers or people from Russia, although Russians were also engaged. Catherine the Great thought that the only right way was to involve as many Cossack officers as possible, because the nobility showed its loyalty to her. The nobility was given all the necessary preferences and possibilities to pursue the colonization of Russian territories. Graduate of the Kiev Mohyla Academy and Ukrainian aristocrat from Cossack, King Petro Zavodovsky became first minister of public education of the Russian Empire. He started his career as a secretary of the Collegium of Little Russia. In 1777, he became a member of the Russian Senate. Zavodovsky headed the Commission for Construction and the Introduction of Public Schools. In every way possible, he tried to involve students of the Kiev Mohyla Academy in work at public schools. Many public schools, district colleges and secondary schools were established in the Russian Empire during his service at the Ministry of Public Education. At that time, three universities, including the Kharkiv University, were founded. 
In 1810, Zawadowski left his position as Minister of Public Education and was appointed to the post of Chairman of the Department of Law of the State Council of the Russian Empire. Dmitry Troshinsky was another graduate of the Kiev Mohila Academy. He was the great-grandson of the nephew of Ukrainian hetman Ivan Mazepa. Troshinsky was a senator and the chairman of the General Imperial Post Office. From 1802 to 1806, he headed the Ministry of the Imperial Court. From 1814 to 1817, he was Attorney General of the Russian Empire. Troyschinsky was one of the state public officials who stressed the need for establishment of human legal norms of life for society. During his entire term in office, Troyschinsky stood not only for the autonomy of Ukraine, but also for the revamping of the legal system. In addition to that, he invested his own money into the development of Ukrainian culture. Thanks to him, the first edition of the epic Eneida by Ivan Kotlarevsky went to print in 1798. Troyschinsky even had his own home theater that was situated in his mirror her to stayed in the Poltava Oblast. He also provided financial support to talented Ukrainians. Among them, there were writer Nikolai Gogol, who entered the Nizhny College, founder of the Kharkiv University, Vasil Karazin, and many others. One of the descendants of the Cossack family is Viktor Kochube. He started to build his career as a diplomatic servant in Sweden, Great Britain, and after then in the Ottoman Empire. At the turn of the 18th 19th centuries, he headed the Collegium of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Empire. In 1802, he was appointed Minister of Foreign Affairs, and in 1831, he was granted the title of Duke. Being a member of the Senate, he took an active part in consideration of the peasant issue. He was against the liberation of landless peasants and making them house serfs. There was the Kochebe dynasty. In particular, the Kochebe family performed administrative functions. There were descendants of Viktor Kochebe, who was Mazepa's comrade in arms, but later was executed. His descendants received lots of privileges during the reign of Peter the Great. And already in the 18th century, during the reign of Catherine the Great, they were one of the larger landowners on the territory of Ukraine. Many governor generals came from the old kin of the Kochebe family line. Many ministers were descendants of the Kochebe family line. But a Ukrainian and Russian public official from the Cossack kin named Alexander Bezborodko reached the greatest heights in the imperial power hierarchy. Alexander Bezborodko. Alexander Bezborodko was the son of a Cossack military unit commander who rose to the rank of Chancellor of the Russian Empire in the last years of the reign of Catherine the Great. The career of Alexander Bezborodko is an excellent example of how a new Cossack generation combined allegiance to the Cossack hetmanate and service in the Russian Empire. He was born in 1747 in the town of Hluhiv, the former capital of the Zaporizhian host, and earned his education at the Kiev Academy. A few decades earlier, such an educational background Ground could have given a kickstart to successful career in the Cossack hetmanate, but times had changed. Bezborodko obtained a colonel rank not only in the service of the hetman, but also in the service of imperial governor of Little Russia Petr Rumyantsev. The young Bezborodko participated in the Russian-Turkish War in 1768-1774. Alexander was a key figure in negotiations and drafting of the Kichukainardra Peace Treaty. According to this document, lands of the Northern Black Sea region were joined to the Russian Empire. This meant that the priority objective of this treaty was the settling of these lands with the Ukrainians. In 1774, Bezborodko was appointed a colonel. Bezborodko lived in St. Petersburg and worked in the reception of the Empress herself. In 1780, Bezborodko, who had already earned the rank of a major general, was transferred to another post. He started to work at the Collegium of Foreign Affairs as an attorney during all foreign negotiations. In 1797, he received the title Duke and became became a chancellor of the Russian Empire. It is commonly known among historians that being in the service in St. Petersburg, he remained a patriot of the Cossack land and he called his native land. It is commonly known among historians that being in the service in St. Petersburg, he remained a patriot of the Cossack land, as he called it his native land. He also helped to publish the Cossack Chronicle, a short chronicle of Little Russia. It is known that he wrote the history of the Cossack Hetmanate, starting with the death of Hetman Danilo Apostol to the beginning of the Rusko-Turkish War in 1768.
The chronicle included descriptions of wars and battles of Cossacks with Turks, Crimean Tatars, and Poles. The last hetman of Ukraine, Kirill Rozumovsky, was compelled by Catherine the Great to abdicate his post before liquidation of the Zaporizhian host was dismissed from state affairs, but one of his sons, Andriy, became an outstanding Russian diplomat. Andriy Rozumovsky provided financial aid to Beethoven. Beethoven offered his adaptation of the song Cossack Beyond the Danube and dedicated several musical compositions to Rozumovsky. The younger Rozumovsky was an outstanding diplomat. He was one of the most famous public figures of that time who took part in the establishment of post-Napoleon culture in Europe and the Congress of Vienna in 1815, which played a crucial role in the destiny of Europe and was held exactly in his palace. It is Rozumovsky who found a previously unknown man named Ludwig van Beethoven and became his main sponsor. In his turn, Beethoven dedicated several music pieces to Rozumovsky. Another descendant of Cossack king of the Poltava regiment was Ivan Pashkevich, who went down in history as a great military leader and field marshal general. He is the only full cavalier of two orders in history, the Order of St. George and St. Volodymyr the Great. He held the title of Earl of Yerevan and the Duke of Warsaw. Ivan Pashkevich was a general. He stood out from other in his military campaign against the Turks in 1827-1828. He was very young at the time. After that, he was sent to the Caucasus. He liberated Yerevan and, of course, the whole territory of Armenia from the Turks. For all his merits, he was awarded many decorations from Tsar Nicholas I of Russia and became his courtier. The massive resettlement of Ukrainians to the capital of the Russian Empire turned it into a Ukrainian cultural political center. If we look at cultural life of the 19th century and the history of Ukraine of the 19th century, then Ukrainian political life took place not only in Kyiv, Kharkiv or Odessa, but in St. Petersburg until 1917. Another great reformer, Earl Sergei Vite, who headed the cabinet of ministers of Tsarist Russia, was not an ethnic Ukrainian, but his kinship was in Ukraine. He graduated from the Odessa University and worked in the department of the Odessa Railway, after which he moved to Kyiv and headed the Southwestern Railway. In 1892, he was appointed Minister of Railway Transport and later Minister of Finance of Russia. In 1897, he implemented monetary reform. In accordance with the reform, the ruble became equal to gold and was turned into a most stable currency of the time. Vite also planned to carry out tax reform. This reform provided for the resettlement of peasants to unoccupied lands in the Asian part of Russia. Vite presupposed that most of his ideas were stolen and later embodied by Prime Minister of Russia Pyotr Stolypin. Prime Minister of Russia Earl Vite was one of the founders of reforms that were later ascribed to Stolypin. Vite openly said that Stolypin was a plagiarist that stole the reform concepts he himself had drafted and took credit for implementing them. As contemporary historians said, Vite spoke with a so-called Little Russian accent and therefore identified himself with Little Russia right up to his death. As of the autumn of 1917, Ukrainians held the best of their higher positions in the administrative, economic, industrial, legal, military and other spheres of activities of the Russian Empire. Ukrainians were involved in all spheres of activities of the Russian Empire. Among them was Radzankov, who headed the State Duma and other ethnic Ukrainians. They occupied the higher posts in ministries, a few of them headed ministries and other migrants from Ukraine served as prime ministers. Ukraine was a so-called source of manpower that provided St. Petersburg with a regular, industrious and reliable labor force. In the 18th-19th centuries, Ukrainians occupied a number of higher posts in the empire. Descendants from the families of Bezborodko, Zavodovsky, Kochubey and Tronshinsky became famous chancellors and ministers who helped their compatriots to be appointed to other influential posts in St. Petersburg. Of course, in order to move up the ranks, they had to have a good command of foreign languages, adhere to the European dress code and refuse to wear extravagant national Cossack clothing. Besides that, Russian officials of Ukrainian origin never forgot about their historical homeland. They promoted the development of Ukrainian culture and patronized it. And those who remembered about the Zaporizhian siege even took part in a conspiracy against the Tsar and were members of various secret societies.